Hello there, my name's Fran Sands. I'm the founder of My Boxing Coach, for those who don't know me. Um, welcome to this video today. Something very different. I've never done one of these before, but what I'm going to do um, is review a boxing computer, a, bo a device that allows um, the capture of data, performance data, in relation to a boxing session. Uh, the device I'm going to look at today is the Everlast PIC, P-I-Q. Um, so um, I'm going to look at this from three viewpoints. Sort of, uh, I've done this review. I've, I didn't want to just do a bog standard. Here's what it does, and and, and it's great or it's not. Uh, I'll score it four out of five. I didn't want to go down that road. So what I've done, I've looked at it through three different viewpoints. Number one, uh, through the viewpoint of a coach or a personal trainer working with a beginner boxer. Number two, a coach like myself working with a team or uh, an elite boxer or a team of boxers up to elite level. Or um, uh, someone who's using boxing to keep fit. Okay, I have lots of guys who use my site and lots of guys and girls who use my site who use boxing purely to keep fit. They don't have a coach, so I was eager to understand how the Everlast Pick and devices like it might work for those guys. Okay, so the Everlast Pick. Um, I'll take you through the package contents. Okay, so here's, here's the actual box. You'll notice I've got two of them because you only get one device per, per box. Okay, um, they cost around about $100 each. So it's a couple of hundred bucks worth of investment. Um, but inside the box, you get a bunch of stuff. First off, you get the robot device. Now, this is the device that captures all of the data. You'll see on there, there's a little yellow dot that's got an L on it. Um, you get two little labels to put L and R on whichever robot you use on whichever hand. Okay. Um, quite discreet, I think, that one. Not too bulky. You get a cradle in which to insert your robot device. And you get a, a wrap in which you insert the cradle so that the device can be um, attached to the hand in a comfortable way. You get a USB charger. The device goes in there and you get about a three hour charge per session, um, which is more than enough, more than ample. And you also get a, a little instruction booklet. Credit to the author of this, really clear, really um, precise about what you need to do to get up and running quite quickly. Uh, there's also more detailed guidance online. So once you put all of that stuff together, that's what you end up with, okay? Um, so it, it, the device itself, what you need to do to, to link to it, uh, you download an app from either the Google Play Store on Android or the um, Apple Store. Um, you launch that account, you set up your uh, profile, and the profile you, you put things like your name, your email address, your height, your weight, uh, and your boxing stance and dominant hand. Um, you charge your robot, you pair your robot with the device, uh, through Bluetooth, so the device pairs with the um, with the robot. You update the firmware of the device when you get it off the box. Make sure you update the firmware, uh, which is the software that actually runs the the robot itself. Um, and you are you are ready to go. There's a few different ways of applying this. Um, you can so during shadow boxing, as long as the device is on the inside of your wrist. This is the placement in which they, they, they tell you to, to place it. Um, as long as it's on the inside of the wrist and it's, the point is pointing forward, um, you should be good. Uh, so for shadow boxing, it can go over the top. Um, when it comes to a application for a glove, you can wrap it around a glove. You'll see that when I go on the, on the demo. Uh, or my mate Andy Wake uh, uh, from Boxercise, he, he, he thinks that you can you can um, apply it 
underneath the Velcro of a of a big glove. Yeah, there's, there's, I, can, I can see all that. The thing I really like about this is uh, the ease of application, how quickly you can take it on and off. So if I'm working with a team of boxers in here, if I'm moving from my shadow boxing onto my heavy bag, it can come off really quickly, stick my glove on, wrap it over the top, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. So quite a neat way of applying the device, I think. Um, so how it works, well, the Everlast Pick, so the Pick device is actually present in other sports. I think these guys have got a presence in both tennis and golf. Um, it's got three key metrics, so it, one of the metrics is speed, and it applies a point system to each metric, so there's a total number of 10,000 points available, and this is how you get something called the Pick score. It combines these three metrics. There's about 10,000 points available, they say at 10,000 points, that is pro boxer level. Okay, I mean, I, you know, you need some benchmark and that, that's fine. So speed, 3,333 points is available. And about 45 kilometers an hour per punch would make you pro level. Uh, G-force, so the force at which the shot lands. Um, again, 3,333 points on offer. With a G-force of about 35 G would would would, would uh, signify pro level um, and retraction time 10 milliseconds and again 3,333 all of those points are combined pushed into a um, some kind of uh, algorithm and you come out with your pick score um, so the key thing for me is that it measures those things and it measures them in a fairly clear and uh, obvious way um, it also uh, gives you something called winning factors which uh, it measures two and three punch uh, combination times, retract, average retraction times, average punch times. So it gives you some indicators on, on, the, on the type of, the type of uh, aspects of your training that you might want might to consider improving. Um, so how did I do, do my assessment? As I said, I looked at it through three sets of hours, but I tested this over a period of about six weeks on and off. I used it in shadow boxing, I used it in, uh, so when I, I'm trying to get myself back to fitness. I, what I tend to do is a full 15 minute bag round. So sort of four, three minute rounds with one minute rest, but don't take the rest. And so a, a number of those 15 minute bag rounds, I recorded individual bag, ses bag um, sessions as, as a session in itself. A session is measured when you turn the device on, it's measuring, so a blue light flashes, I'll turn it on for you now. Um, so you can see there that a blue light flashes to signify it's on. Um, when you want to end your session, you, you turn that off. And that records that as a complete session. So you could keep it on throughout the session, or you could measure individual rounds. Uh, me being me, I did both. Uh, so I like to measure individual rounds so that I could establish uh, punch volume accuracy and how the device distinguished between shots. I'll talk you through that during demonstration I was really curious to to make sure that that was done in the right way um, I used this on four different pieces of punching equipment so an angled heavy bag a standard heavy bag a wall pad a wall um, uh, fixed to the wall uh, a heavy duty punching bag and a maze bag um, I didn't use it on focus mitts or pads with my boxes I thought that was fairly low down on the list. I'll probably use it with that over the coming weeks, but um, because ultimately me as the coach, I dominate in terms of how many punches are thrown. I dictate how many shots are thrown, so and I can tell whether they, you know, they're, they're not pulling the weight or they're not they're not hitting the weight or or they're slacking off. And I also use three different weight of gloves. Um, I used 16 ounce, 10 ounce, and bag mitts. I just wanted to see again what kinds of impact that had on speed and on g-force or impact okay so what i'll do now i'll take you i'll talk you i'll show you a session uh, how i recorded this through some bags um, and some use of the maze bag and so on um, uh, following that i'll give you a walkthrough of the app screen itself and then i'll uh, i'll take you through uh, the key points from each of those viewpoints so whether you're a coach pt or a keep fitter i'll talk you through some of the points there and i'll finish off on some um, uh, overall positives and negatives. Okay, so let's get into the bag session. Okay, uh, round the shadow boxing. 
Oh, relatively short round. You can see that I've um, attached the pick device using the wraps um, looped across my thumb and around my wrist. Certainly, sort of no more um, uh, invasive or troublesome, if you like, than, than conventional bandages. You don't really realise you've got them on. So quite discreet. Um, and I really want to, you know, I really try and put pressure on the device, if you know what I mean. I wanted to, so I've, I use lots of different shots, angles, varied foot movements, so that I'm punching across the target. Um, bunches of punches and seeing how it records them. And that should be really interesting when, we, when I do get to test the, the drills, real time, time element of the, of the app. Um, so that's me initial round of shadow boxing. Now onto the angled bag. Now, interestingly, I mean, this that is the first round. But I hit this bag and registered a greater G-force than I did on other pieces of punching equipment. Um, but in that round here, I'm, I'm really going for power with these shots, trying to um, maximise that that G-force rate. That is something that you do want to be just slightly careful of, especially with beginner boxes. If they start loading up, they get all kinds of, in all kinds of um, trouble in, in relation to maintaining the shape. You'll also notice that I've simply wrapped the uh, the pick device in the in in its own uh, holder and cradle around the wristband of the bag mitt that I'm using. Conventionally, I use 10 ounce gloves. Um, I wanted to give a run out on, on sort of molded bag mitts. Uh, and see what kind of differences are registered uh, between the 10 ounce and the bag mitts. So that's my angled heavy bag round over with. Now, wall boards. I was expecting this to be the, the highest rated G-Force. Um, it did okay on I did okay on punch speed on it, but G-Force it was significantly lower than any other um, punching piece of punching equipment is 27.8 G uh, as opposed to 37.1 G on, on the angled bag my sense is as you can see there's quite a bit of movement uh, it's soft uh, whilst it's fixed to the wall there's quite a bit of give in the padding um, so yeah it, it, it didn't register as highly wonderful piece of punching equipment though and now onto the the conventional heavy bag that we're all used to seeing and again, I wanted to really vary this round, mix it up, lots of different types of shots. Okay, going for some speed work, vary the angles. What is the device doing when I'm when I'm doing this kind of punching? Um, and to be fair, it gives a reasonable account of itself. It identifies when I'm uppercutting broadly and when I'm hooking. You know, but it, this is not a self-coach. This device, so. You know, you've got you've, you've got to maybe do stuff like this, record yourself, watch yourself back, and just check on the form of the shots you're throwing. Um, so all of that high punch rate now, you see, I'm just slowing up a little bit. Um, but it's yeah, uh, again, quite a good G-force register on the heavy bag. Um, powered in those last few shots. Now this is the one I really wanted to measure, this is the maze bag and this is the thing I'll talk to you about retraction time. So the device, one of its pick score measures is retraction time, which is how quickly you retract the arm back to punching position. Now look at them short range shots, when I'm at close range, you can see that when the shot lands, it's more or less back in its home position anyway. Um, so at close range you really need to discount the... Um, the retraction time because it simply doesn't work. I mean, I was getting retraction times around 200 milliseconds. It just uh, it confuses the device, and you know why? Why wouldn't it? It's not you know it's not an actual coach, but um, G force on this uh, quite high, but not quite as high high as the original or the the angled bag in the first round. But still, all you got to remember is punching a maze bag. It's pretty much like punching a brick wall. It's absolutely solid. So maybe if I'd have shifted this into the first round, the G-Force would have been highest of all. And there's my demo over with. Okay, so um, here's the app. Uh, dashboard we've got in front of us here. You see at the top, you've got my name, 
that's the pick score I mentioned how the pick score is calculated um, total number of punches over the lifetime of how I've been using this which is the, uh, the last few weeks what my record pick score is best g-force and best retraction time and punch speed and then down below you've got a, a list of, of all of the um, sessions um, and viewable in days, weeks and months. Um, jumping up then into the drop down menu which is the, uh, the lines up in the top left hand corner. You can see we've got um, five uh, areas. We've got, we've got the dashboard and then we've got the pick score. I'll show you that. It's just a visual representation of what we've already covered you can look at the details the speed what the maximum is and what you uh, the average of your last six saved sessions um, drills now this those sneaky guys at everlast with pick i've just released this brand new bit of functionality i haven't tested it yet so um, i'll need to look at that in the in the near future um, but you know really positive signs some feedback saying we would like to see a um, a real time element. That's exactly what this is. So the guys in the development team there have put this together, and and have shifted it to, to the top and have released a, a real time element, which is which is real positive. Um, jump down to settings. This is just where you set your profile up in the top bit. There you can include height, weight, a dominant hand, etc and just a selection of the system of measurements be it imperial or metric um, and we can jump into the sessions and i'll just talk you through the sessions that we have um, once it gets itself refreshed okay so this is june i can i can uh, drop down there i can select the last month's worth i can look at individual days during last month um but let's select uh let's go back there let's get rid of our calendar okay so i'll select the most recent one i did so this was a you can see here these are the the winning factors that, that, that um, we talk about um, two punch combinations and it shows you the speed and power if I click on next that takes me through to my actual session um, so I recorded the session uh, last Tuesday and this was a 15 minute session that constituted four th by three minute rounds of boxing uh, so there were three rests so in, in real terms it was 12 minutes of active punching uh, 632 punches, best speed 43.9k, best g-force um, 34.3. Now here's one of the really nice elements I think of the system. You can see here it's broke, broken down all of my punches. Very impressed with the way it records punches. And if I select one of these, so if I go into left hook, you can see I threw 202 of them, 354 left uppercuts, um, only 13 jabs um, my sense is that um, the left hook is being um, misselected at times because I threw a few more jabs than that I can promise you um, so if we go into 202 uh, left hook punches so you, and as you can see a maximum speed g-force all nicely presented and you can compare um across the piece now i actually one of the bits of feedback i have i would like to be able to download all of the data from this app um it's it's excellent in terms of how it looks um, it's usability um real really positive um and i but the, the, the one of the few criticisms i find it difficult to, to compare jumping in and out of different screens so i would like to be able to um uh, to download that as i say to a to, to a device of my choosing. Interestingly on G-Force I found that crosses and the left hook in terms of the weight or size of glove when I used 10 ounce gloves though the G-Force was greater than when I used bag gloves and intro or bag mitts just an interesting uh, slight variation. All in all a very nice app and you know that it's gonna continue to develop um, the guys at PIC seem to really want to make this work so uh, big plus on the on the app itself right um so let me just take you through some of the 
observations are made from the different viewpoints. So as a coach or a personal trainer working with a beginner, look, I, in terms of using this device with a beginner, I would be, my view on its best application is really from a technical development and motivational viewpoint. So I would, it would be controlled use. I would use it probably once a week because over a period of a month, three months, six months, nine months, um, there's, there's an accelerated level of development, but boxing is like most other things that you learn. You go through plateaus and you improve and improve and improve in gradual sort of inclines. Um, my view is that using this device will allow you, when you're working drills, when you're uh, improving the strength, the stamina, the speed of the individual but most importantly in those early stages the technical development the skills development they will undoubtedly see improvements in speed improvements in punch volume because when individual skills are done correctly um, the faults from one skill aren't transferred into the next so uh, when you learn how to throw a jab properly you can throw a right hand more easily and a left hook so you build combinations in a more reliable and controlled way um, the boxer or the individual will be able to see in gradual improvements in, in the speed, the g-force and even the retraction time of, of the boxer including the punch volume because of what I've just mentioned um, and it's all about this, uh, the integrity of the skill and the footwork. Only further down the road would I think about using this as a, as a driver for, for, for lung busting activity if you like. It, its primary use would be as an aid for me to demonstrate technical improvement with the boxer. Um, and what you can actually do is these devices can sync to different, diff these robots can sync to different phones. You'll, if you sync it to your device initially, so your smartphone or your tablet, you'll get a notification that it's being paired with another device. But actually I think it'd be quite nice to al allow the individual to pair it to their device so that they own the data you can get what you need from it but it's, it's their data they can look back through it and and and, and check how that's um how that's improvement or the visible improvement next step then is the coach working with an elite team of an elite boxer or, or a team of boxers so a team of boxers so think about and again i was talking uh, to andy wake about this my mate from boxer size and if you get a chance go and look at andy's youtube channel some awesomely insightful um, very clever and he's an athletic coach with years of experience well worth having a look at some of the videos on his YouTube channel you'll learn a ton of stuff so Andy and I were talking and we were talking about uh, the principle of uh, periodization macro cycles micro cycles so in terms of being key tests and measures at the end of each of your periods end of each of your individual sections of a, of a micro cycle so your stamina, endurance, strength, speed. Uh, you could actually use this as a tool to measure the gradual improvement at the start and end of a, a, of a periodization session. Great for you as a coach or a trainer to be able to identify that, quantify the improvement. Great for the boxer because they can see the improvement. Psychology really being massive, massively important. I mentioned before as well, if I've got a team full of boxers in here slamming bags left, right and centre, this, look, this type two hundred dollars, two hundred quid is is uh, is an investment for a, a club like this. So you want to get the maximum use. You can rip that device off one person, turn it off, turn it off, put it, put it on another person, and you can collect data from four or five or six individuals in one training session. So that's what I really like about it. Um, that's that's one of the things I, I really like about it. You could also have league tables set up. Um, boxers love competition. That's all sports people, sports people do. So you can have a little mini sport league table where each week is go for who's who's throwing the fastest number of combinations, who's loading up with the most powerful shots, whose endurance is 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 by far the best over a two minute round or a three minute round. Um, but again, I'd I'd urge a little bit of caution in terms of technique and style compromise. One of the big problems that all you guys out there who are coaches will know is when boxers try to hit too hard, try to hit too fast, the style becomes untidy. So you, you run the risk of introducing um, errors or, or difficulties in the style. So you just want, want to be aware of that. Um, it's not a, uh, 
an all-seeing guy. Um, as I say, quite an investment, but can be shared across the team. I'll put it this way, the, the pick device will most definitely be getting used in this gym, but it won't become uh, it won't become the staple of what we do. It will have its place. It will be a valued component. Finally, those who are boxing for fitness, and I have a lot, lots of people who, who do this. They can't get access to a boxing gym, so they come to sort of my site. They they buy my uh, my development products and they work with them at home, and that's great. They love it. And um, but I wanted to think from their point of view about whether a device like this works. Okay, so all of the stuff I've said previously is valid about its use and how you control it and how you apply it and, and all of those those things. I would also again urge weekly use. I wouldn't use this in every single session. You could become a bit obsessive about it. Um, I think it should be used to demonstrate gradual improvement in, in technique and development. If you try measuring it too much, it's like the it's like the individual who maybe is checking their weight and they're stepping on the, the scales three or four times a day. It doesn't make sense. You know why not leave it a couple of days? Be sensible and and weigh yourself every every couple of days at exactly the same time. You know to get that that that, that overall view. Um, Recognise that your skills development and your drills uh, and the overall quality of your session are what make you better. A device like this won't make you better in and of itself. It will help you get better, but actually. Work your drills, make sure you're doing all of that stuff in order to, for the demonstration to be, um, to be pointed out by the PIC robot. Right, the, uh, one of the, the challenges, you don't have a coach to point out technical flaws. So if your elbow's flaring, a coach would spot that a mile off in a, in a place like this. If you're under rotating uh, your hips when you're throwing shots, if you're not turning the fist over during a hook. You, you know, all of these things will have an impact on the measure. So what you would want to do is really take that coach yourself thing to the next level. So if you're spotting on a device that you're not really making improvements, get a video done of yourself and then look at your boxing style and see what common faults are occurring during your punches. So this device might be an indicator that there's a problem with, with a particular type. If you're not putting together combinations effectively, that could be a skills development and is likely to be a skills development issue. So it can be a good indicator, but you're going to need to be really um, insightful about what you, you see. Um, in closing, okay, some of the plus points of the pick. The accuracy of the number of punches thrown is very good. Me being the sad person that I am, I actually did a count off of a round of boxing against what was recorded on the on the um, device and plus or minus one or two, I was right on the money. Its ability to distinguish punches really good, especially hooks versus uppercuts. That impressed me. Um, it's unintrusive in use. The app is very good, nice interface, nice and user friendly. Um, overall, a really positive component of a of a quality skills and development regime but not the primary driver. Uh, drawbacks. There is no real time option. Now, I mean that might be a positive in terms of having real time competition going on in, in, in the gym. Uh, you know, um, I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't consider it a massive drawback. It's maybe an opportunity, as all of these negatives are. Uh, there's no round time, and again, not a major problem. We're good for round timers, but for those individuals at home, saves you having two things running at the same time. Uh, this is this is something for me that I am not able to download the data from the device and put it into a spreadsheet. Look, I and there's many others like me, personal training and boxing coaching, lots of guys now and and and, and girls for that matter. Lots of uh, boxing coaches have become very adept at managing data, so they can download stuff into spreadsheet. They can chop and change and and, and visualise it in different ways. So I think that would be a major plus. I wonder whether there's some opportunity around defensive capability, so we can measure punches, bum bum bum, manage speed. When boxers tire on the bags, what they'll tend to do is this to give their arms a rest. Well, if I want fit and hard, tough and strong boxers. Even during a tired period, I want their hands there. Okay, it's not an exper experienced boxer can do all of this, but certainly during a form to keep the hands there. So I don't know whether the guys are pick 
might want to consider that in the future but just be conscious and um, very good at long range very good very good at mid range as you saw on the demo retraction for close range punches as you can see there when my close range punch lands my fist is virtually in the home position anyway so the retraction time doesn't really qualify for close range punching and that is it look a cool device if you've got the money you know and, and enjoy using a device like this we'll use it in here um, if you've got any questions, comments, do let me know. Um, I'll, I'll be happy to try and um, give you a little more insight. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Quite a long video, I know. So thank you so much for your patience. Um, I hope it's been of value uh, and best of best of luck in the future, whether you go for the pick or not. Cheers.